what's interesting about all of this is that you you started in the church music and of course you i think boys choir i think church music yep but but you do so much more and you're famous for your church music and you you have gotten awards for it you compose it you arrange it you conduct it and yet you do everything else too yeah is it is it is it a foundation for everything this this well deep understanding of and church music is you know it's been around for about 2000 years sure is that the kind of classical music one comes to and then one can branch out or can it work the other way well that was the music i knew um when i started and and um and that was wonderful but at the same time i grew up in the 60s when the beatles were around and and um you know, if you were a young person, that was massive. That was kind of, it. that was what we wanted. Sure. And that's, they were who we wanted to be. And of course, my wonderful parents who were very strict, my sister and I weren't allowed to watch them on oh, TV. Oh, <laughs> Can you believe it? We, we had to, you know, my father was horrified. And of course they had beetle haircuts. If you look at that, their haircuts now, they're not much longer than mine. <laughs> but they were, and, and that was that sort of post-war, again, euphoria. And they captured that. And, but could they write a tune, you know? And then just Forever. up the, Yes. And just up the road from me, where I lived in London, uh, near London, um, Elton John played in the local pub and he was a student uh, uh, at, at the Royal Academy of Music. I mean, he's a fantastic musician. Yeah, yeah. So, and he, could he write a tune, you know? Right. And, and the Beatles producer was George Martin, who was an oboist. He was a classically trained musician. You know, he, he drew them into this world. And my, my, one of my best friends at school was um, a, a chap called Andrew Mariner, who is, um, he is a uh, uh, principal clarinet of the London Symphony Orchestra, but his dad was Sir Neville Mariner, who, had, who founded the Academy of Smart in the Fields. And they were playing, I mean, they played on Yesterday and Eleanor Rigby, yeah. you know. So he was drawing on all this energy from different areas of music. Thank you, George. Yeah, exactly. And, and George Martin brought, brought, I mean, pop music into this sort of different arena. And we all thought this was wonderful, you know, and for us. Well, it... when you add that much of this music is directly influenced by the blues, the R&B, the things yep. coming out of the black experience in America. Sure. What a jumbo. Yeah. And also, you know, certainly in, in Britain, it coincided too with our tradition of storytelling. You know, in Europe, a lot of, song traditions come from storytelling and 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 um because we're a, a, a an island and we're surrounded by sea there were huge numbers of songs about the sea so it was all about it was all about um you know going away and um maybe coming back yeah hopefully or or you know and my love i love my love because i know my love loves me and i've gone off to sea and you you know that that was that was it's very much part of our tradition. I think music hall and kind of vaudeville in America, that all came out of that same tradition of storytelling. And I think pop musicians and classical musicians love to tell stories. I mean, if you, um, and that, that is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm.